Hi, welcome back to another Heather Mac Reacts. Today we're going through some Am I the Evil stories. And if you like videos like this, make sure you subscribe because I post five times a week, every single week. And if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's get into this first Am I the Evil story. This says, am I the a-hole for making my family cancel their vacation because I won't watch their dogs? As someone who doesn't like love, 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 love dogs, not sure I'd want a dog sit either. Like I already have enough of them. Maybe it's a situation like that. Reddit says they're not the a-hole, so let's find out for ourselves. My parents, 82 male and 75 female, asked if I would help them book a much needed vacation. They also asked me to do the same for my brother, 43, and sister-in-law, 33, because they wanted to take a family vacation in September. My husband, 46, and I, 41 female, can't afford to go because I am currently out of a job. Even though this would be the first family vacation I will have ever missed and it made me really sad, I said I would, of course, help. My mom even mentioned to me that in a way, it's good because I'd be able to watch my brother's pugs and my parents' chihuahua. Here's the thing about watching the dogs. It's a 24-7 job that requires me to stay at my brother's house. The dogs are wonderful, but very high maintenance. Because of this, I have been telling my brother for nearly 10 years that he needed to hire a dog sitter. Money isn't an issue for him. So you can't blame that. I've dog sat for them three times this past year, varying from one to five nights. They paid me well, but I do not feel comfortable staying at their house and I find the round-the-clock care exhausting. My husband and I have five cats and we are no stranger to feeling like our pets are our kids, but we don't have dogs for a reason. Now I'm supposed to be booking this trip for my brother, but he hasn't even asked me about watching the dogs. Sunday at family dinner, everyone is there except my sister-in-law who was ill. My brother was sitting across from me, so I reached out to hold his hand and say that I love him. I love the pugs, but I can't watch them when they go on vacation and that he needs to get a dog sitter. I said it was just too much to ask me to be trapped at their house for seven nights and that I have been asking him to hire a dog sitter for nearly a decade. I even offer suggestions and said I'll help find someone. He starts to get reactive and says that they won't watch my cats anymore. I said, that's fine. We have a cat sitter, but I point out that I asked them if they can help. They, on the other hand, didn't ask me. My brother finally concedes that it is a lot to ask seven nights and five dogs. Excuse me? Yes, five dogs, because his mother-in-law apparently was planning to go too, so now added to the mix are two Italian greyhounds. I stay calm and gently point out that I felt this way before knowing there were five dogs. Can you... I felt this way before knowing there were, I think you meant, three dogs. Can he imagine how I felt? He seemed to understand. By the time I left dinner, there were hugs and kisses and all was well. I knew my brother was upset, but he seemed to understand and I was really proud of putting up boundaries. The next evening, I call my parents to see if they have heard from my brother. Apparently, he called them after he got home from family dinner and was blindsided by me. My sister-in-law was just as upset as him too. They think I'm throwing a tantrum because I can't go on a vacation. Well, yes, that sucks. I told him and my real issue is being trapped at their house for seven nights. Now they are canceling the vacation because I won't watch the dogs. Am I the a-hole for telling them I won't do it? Well, first of all, you never said you wouldn't watch your parents' dog. Like, you talked about, oh, family cancel the vacation. So everyone's canceling their vacation because your brother can't get a dog sitter. That's silly as hell. You are not the a-hole. You do not have to do anything. You don't have to watch anyone's pet or kid or plant if you don't want to. And he's asking a lot and he added on two dogs and didn't even ask you, just assumed like, well, you're the one, you're the straggler who has to stay behind. So you're just gonna take on all the responsibilities of everything that's left behind, right? Wrong. I say you're not the a-hole. I'm glad you stood up for yourself. Let's see what Reddit has to say. Not the a-hole. They are grown people who had plenty of time to find arrangements for their dogs. Didn't they have somebody else to watch their dogs when you all traveled together? Is this a weird ploy to punish you by making you feel guilty or something? Seems reactive. 
OP responds, the only time we have all traveled together was for my brother's wedding, which the dogs came to. This would be an international beach trip, which we haven't had in, I guess, over a decade. To be fair, he couldn't go on the last trip in 2015 and I went, but I only had one cat that had no special requirements at the time, so my roommate watched her. So I feel bad for him not being able to not going on a family vacation although it feels self-induced to me at this point but I am very emotional and I can't tell if my judgment is clouded yeah literally care.com has pet sitters on there you could and if money is no object they can stay in your home your dogs never have to leave your house put them in the guest room put them on the couch like to, uh, give them some money for food like call it a fucking day it's if money is no object, there are great places your dogs could go. We used to take our dogs to this place called Camp Bow Wow. They have them all over the country and they're amazing. Like the, the dogs have like their own little kennel, like they take naps during the day, but most of the day they are out and they are playing. There's a big dog yard and a little dog yard and they're just playing, playing, playing. And they go and they take a nap and they have a little treat and then they're playing, playing, playing. Then they get put down for bed and best part is there's cameras so you can tune in on the app and find your dog and see how they're having like the time of their life at this place that's an option more so than just being like well if my sister won't stay in my house trapped for a whole week straight to watch my pain in the ass dogs i'm not going on the trip i guess you're gonna miss out on the trip then buster Sorry, not sorry. I say you're not the evil. I would like to know what you all think about that one in the comments and let's get on to the next story. This says, am I the evil for leaving after my sister-in-law called me clingy? Oh, well, that's not very nice. Is it son-in-law or sister-in-law? I guess we'll have to find out. Either way, that's rude. That's disrespectful. Let's see what the story has to say. I, 24 female, have been visiting my aunt's place for a wedding who lives a few hours away from me. She has two boys, 30 and 27 male, and both of them are married to two beautiful and intelligent women. I met them only recently, and I have not hung out with them a lot. I always wanted older brothers since I only have an older sister. Although I acknowledge that this was not their responsibility. My aunt loves me a lot though. I asked her if I could stay at their place for a couple days more. At night, both of my cousins were with their wives and I was helping my aunt with dinner. She asked me to call all of them downstairs. When I went to the room, I, ho I heard my older sister-in-law say, Ugh, when is my name leaving? I don't know why she's so clingy. She annoyed us throughout the wedding and meddles in our family so much. My cousins just lightly laughed along. I'm unsure if they found humor in her words or was it awkward laughter. My cousin saw me in the doorway and it looked like he had seen a ghost. I just said, please come downstairs. Dinner is ready. He stopped me and asked me if I had heard her. I just gave him a smile and said while well, holding tears back, I did, but it's okay because she can have her opinion. It's okay if she doesn't like me. I did not take it into consideration that you guys are on a hectic schedule and forced myself to be here. I'll do better. He apologized to me on her behalf and she apologized as well saying she was just stressed about the busy schedule and packing although I had been doing chores for them all day to not be dead weight you're just a fucking bitch sister-in-law after the dinner they tried to talk to me but I avoided them and called a friend I talked to him just trying to calm myself down because my feelings were really hurt and I felt unwanted in the morning I packed my bags early and told my aunt I'm going to visit a friend in the city then I have a flight late in the evening to go back home ASAP for work. My aunt was surprised and asked me to wait until my cousins wake up before I go, but I told her I had said my goodbyes last night already. After seeing my friend, I just went to the airport a few hours early and sat in the lounge until it was time to go. My sister and I have shared GPS locations for safety purposes, and I forgot that she can see me being at the airport a couple days earlier than planned. I told her everything. When I got off the flight, I had missed calls and texts from my aunt and my cousins. Apparently, my sister told my mom what, what went down and she was too unhappy. She then called my aunt and asked her about this and found out that she was unaware of it all. My cousins had played it cool. Long story short, my aunt and uncle are super upset with my sister-in-law. My sister-in-law feels like I made an immature and rash decision and made her look bad in front of the entire family. I could have given them a chance the next day to fix things, but I threw them all under the bus. Am I the e-hole? You think that's the first time she ran her fucking mouth about you? 
do you really think it is? Because I can promise you she was all too comfortable saying those words in that room full of people and half of them were your family. No, you didn't fuck up. Your cousins fucked up by not standing up for you. They're grown ass men. They can't be like, dude, don't talk about my cousin like that. Dude, how about you like relax? She's been nothing but helpful all day. No, you are not the a-hole. I am glad that everyone found out saw underneath that bitch's mask because it's ugly under there. I say you're not the a-hole, but let's see what Reddit has to say. Not the a-hole, your cousin and his wife are massive ones though. When I went to the room, I heard my older sister say, uh, okay, that whole section. She wanted you gone and you left. Then when your aunt found out why she is crying the blues. My sister-in-law feels like I made an immature and rash decision and made her look bad in front of the entire family. I could have given them a chance the next day to fix things, but I threw them all under the bus. She threw herself under the bus by saying she wanted you gone. I mean, she really did say like, when is she leaving? Bitch, I'm leaving today. Bitch, I'm leaving in the morning. Next says, especially when the OP was helping them all day, she wasn't too clingy to be used. Yeah, were you complaining about her then? Or only when she wasn't around to do something for you? She's a bitch. Fuck her. I'm glad that your sister and your mom and your aunt were all standing up for you. I say not the equal. I'd like to know what you all think about that one in the comments. And let's get on to the next story. This says, am I the able for not inviting a child with Down syndrome to my son's birthday party? This sounds heartbreaking, but I think I remember when I was saving this like last week that there were some circumstances that we just have to hold off judgment for a minute. So let's just get into it. I, 34 female, was planning my son six turning seven male's birthday party. It was going to be at our house and I allowed for him to have up to six friends over. He chose six of his friends and we sent the invitations and they all said they could come. Fast forward to the day of the party, we all had a great time and sang happy birthday. I took a video of everyone singing happy birthday and I, with permission, posted it on my Instagram. The next day I was bombarded with messages from a mom on the PTA who follows my Instagram. She was upset that I didn't invite her child who has Down syndrome. She said that her kid and my son are friends. I'd never heard my son mention this kid, so I asked him about him. He said they were friends last year, but haven't talked for a while. I told the mom this, and she told me that I am disgusting for not inviting her son, and she told me about how he never gets invited to events. I feel bad for him, but I only invited who my son wanted to invite. She keeps blasting my phone with messages. Am I the e-hole? No. It, okay, if it was like, he invited his entire fourth grade class, except for the kid with Down syndrome, okay, you're definitely the a-hole. If it was like your entire uh, Boy Scout troop, except for the one kid with Down syndrome, you'd be the a-hole. The fact that he didn't want to invite a kid that he hasn't been friends with since last year. And also, why would this one random kid feel left out? First of all, is he on Instagram? Because he's six or seven years old. I don't think he should be on Instagram first of all. Second of all, why would he feel bad about not being invited to a party for someone he's not really friends with anymore? Like, I think he knows who he talks to every day. And if he doesn't talk to birthday boy every day, why would he assume he's going to birthday boy's party? Right? Right. This is weird. She's just fucking throwing that kid's disability around like a goddamn weapon. Like, ooh, who can I stab? What can I get? What can I get out of it? What can I guarantee you that bitch has at least one gofundme that was in her name for her child promise okay i say not the a-hole let's see what reddit has to say not the a-hole you asked your son for six names to invite to his party and he gave you the names of the six children he chose to have at his party you didn't decide to include or exclude any of them from the title i thought i'd be waiting in here to call you an a-hole for inviting all the children in the class except for the child with down syndrome but that's not at all what happened i have some sympathy for the mom trying to stand up for her child but she's doing this all wrong 100% agree. She needs to calm down. In the words of the great Taylor Swift, you need to calm down. You're being far too loud. Next says, OP, is it possible she thought her son was the only one not invited? I'm wondering if she saw the Instagram post and got the wrong idea. So if she saw the Instagram 
post, you would see that there weren't 30 kids there. There were six kids there. So I don't think that's the issue. I still say you're not the a-hole, but I would like to know what you all think about that one in the comments. Don't forget, we have a playlist of over 325 MIB a-hole videos up here that you've binge. Please don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!